What is up everyone? I hope you're all doing well today. JD here with another Everyday Carry video. Today I'm going to be doing my full review of the CJRB Feldspar. This particular variant is the Burlap Micarta variant, which I think looks really good in person. It is a little bit tough to get this to come out nice and good looking in video but I'm gonna get some tasty B-roll for you guys to help make up for that. Now, I will admit the burlap's probably an acquired taste, but if you do like micarta and you do like the bar, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, the burlap micarta, then this, my friends, might be for you. Let's get into the knife. So what you have here is a 3.5 inch stonewash D2 blade that is 0.13 inches thick. You have a handle length of 4.62 inches with a handle thickness of 0.55 inches. So this is a pretty thin and slicey guy. Your overall length just over eight inches coming in at 8.12 inches. And the weight for this particular knife is 3.67 ounces. So this is ultra lightweight on my channel. Anything under four, four is the cutoff can't go any higher than 3.99 on that ultra ultra lightweight that is an ultra lightweight knife for me and uh let me tell you this thing is really nice this thing is clearly on bearings these are not washers no sir these are definitely bearings that action is way too wicked fast to be washers now Let's go ahead and do some size comparisons for this knife because I just throw a bunch of dimensions at you and that probably don't mean squat. What is really going to help is some sort of frame of reference. So I'm going to bring in the usual suspects. First, I am going to bring in the Spider Co Para 3 with the actual factory G10 handles and the Pacific Sun hardware. I line my knives up by the pivot. I don't bring them into the handle so that you get the overall length. What I want you to see is from the pivot point where your hand's going to be reaching up against how much blade, how much handle. So just in case you're unfamiliar with how I do things, I like to do it that way. For me, it's a better frame of reference. It really helps me understand. As you can see here, 3 inch on the pair of 3, 3.5 inches on the actual Feldspar. So you got a longer blade length, but very close to that handle length. That's where I think I don't go with ratios. I like the fact that if you're going to carry a small bladed knife, that you still can get a full handle grip when you have hands like this. The other usual suspect that I'm going to bring in here, which is probably a better point of reference, is going to be the Paramilitary 2 with the jade g10 scales from phytanium these are the contoured scales as you can see here very similar in length both from the blade from the pivot and handle length overall so a really good frame of reference if you're familiar with these particular knives um, hopefully that helps you with that reference a couple of other knives that are very popular that i think may help with this reference is going to be the bench made bug out yes those are the JG10 contoured scales from Flytanium. I can't help it. I love them. But I do plan on doing a little bit of a project there that will change the color of that in the future. And then I have the Hogue Doug Ritter. Um, I know some people say this is basically the Griptilian. This operates better. Blade shape, hand length, very similar to the Feldspar. As you can see, you're really close with the Benchmade because the Benchmade just under three and a half inches but not as much handle length really lines up well with the three and a half inch blade length and the um, handle length over here on the Hogue Doug Ritter. Now I did want to do some comparisons with some knives that I think these are uh, this knife I'm sorry would actually kind of line up with very similarly and I did pick this up even though I know it's a bigger knife but because of the fact that it is slender it is not thick and I think the burlap for me and the brass uh, collar, pivot collar, look really good on the knife. Gives it a little bit of a classy-ish type vibe. So I wanted to bring in another office carry here that I do really like. And that is the Civivi Imperium with a three and a half inch blade length and similar handle length. 
Now, as you can see here, the handle length is not as long as it is on the Feldspar. It's really close. And then the blade length from the pivot with that three and a half inch looks shorter, but they're both three and a half inches. And the cutting surfaces on these two are very similar. You have more belly and you have a little bit more cutting on the D2 with the Feldspar than you do with the Imperium. Um, I'm going to leave that one out here because there is another knife that I do think that flexes into my office carry and that is going to be the Elementum button lock and I think this guy actually is probably even closer in comparison with this type of knife. So this kind of gives you an idea of how I intend to use it. It's kind of that light to medium duty EDC for me that I'm going to be um, having in my rotation. I haven't really figured out what I want to carry it with as far as companion carries, but when I do, I will follow up with that and let you guys know. I probably will use the Drab Green Victoria Knox My Carter Scale um, companion carry that I really like, but what really got me interested, because I know I'm late to the game on the Feldspar, I, I know I've seen a ton of reviews on it, and I didn't really pull the trigger, hadn't really seen a variant that really jumped out at me that I wanted like this one did. So that's one of the reasons that I'm delayed on it. But the other thing was a couple of months ago, I picked up the Rhea and I was so impressed with this knife, the build quality. Um, I always forget the, the it's the AR RPM 9 blade steel, uh, very comparable blade steel, I think to 440 HC, I'm not sure, but it's really tough. It's an in-house blade steel really really good and, uh, and the cutting performance impressed me but so did the action and the build quality which is what led me <laughs> to pick up the feldspar but i didn't want the three inch because I, I feel like i have a bunch of three inch knives and that those three inch blade length knives are a little bit small in hand and just to kind of give you a reference here's the uh the three inch elementum and you know uh my pinkies hanging off the back of that so I, I need that blade length but I'm I'm big enough to wear like the clothes that I'm wearing and the things that I that I have are going to allow me to use this as a dual purpose knife I do have some like the Rhea that are very specific office carries that you know they look real gentlemanly uh, which is why I do like them I like having some of them in my rotation but I, I like to have a knife also that can flex into other areas another knife that i think that does that really well that i think would be very good to compare to even though it's not exact same size is going to be the pilar from crkt and as you can see this is a little bit smaller but this is actually a three inch knife that i think flexes well into office carry and you know weekend duty cutting down your cardboard boxes uh, whatever else you might be needing this to use th on that job. Let me go ahead and give you my th final thoughts because I've compared it to a bunch of knives, which I hope helps some of you all. The reason I do that is I'm hoping maybe you don't have a bug out. Maybe you don't have some of Spyderco knives. I'm hoping some of these other budget knives that I really like, that I highly recommend, help from a frame of reference. This is going to be a knife. I've had it for a little while. I've been using it, carrying it really impressed with the action and the build quality of the cjrb knives and i'm not surprised because the ria really let me know if the other knives are built like this these suckers are going to be really good one thing i forgot to mention the inset liners don't peer out from the micarta which i really like the actual non-show side hides the actual uh, liner lock I think that is really nice. That's a nice attention to detail, and I don't want that to be overlooked in this video. The actual inset liners are milled out on the show side, and there's a little bit of milling right here on the bottom of where that liner lock stops. So that, that I think, really helps with the weight, and I think that's really nice attention to detail. Um, it has this drill out for the lanyard hole. I kind of wish they would have just took maybe like a little bit of a backspacer perhaps, or uh, I don't know. I think there's 
I don't have a knife on the table, but I think the Rhea has just that little bar that sandwiches in between when you bolt it all down to do that. Uh, I think it would have been nicer not to have that on there. I did forget to mention that the deep carry pocket clip on this knife is a little bit nicer than the ones that come on the Civivis. The Civivis, for whatever reason, um, hopefully you can see that the Civivi points up more. I don't like this flat style. Um, I like the way that this contours down, but I like the way that the actual pocket clip ramp up here tapers back down as opposed to sticking straight up. I don't know. Maybe if these two got together, you know, did the um, dance between the sheets, maybe had a baby. Heck if I know. I, I, it just kills me. It's not a bad pocket clip and it, I'm not really feeling it too much because it is really low profile to the knife. I just wish that it ramped down and came back up and did this. And I wish Civivi would just totally redesign their pocket clip. The action on here is really nice. Thumb studs are in an excellent position. You can get the spidey foot going on this. This is a really good knife. This knife, I think the base model of this knife is like just over 30 bucks. That's a killer deal. That is a really good deal. Uh, the other thing that I didn't mention as well is I really do like the stone wash finish on the d2 that's going to help against any type of corrosion and d2 is a really good steel it's affordable which is why you see a lot of the budget and more affordable knives using that d2 steel i know a lot of people in the knife community are tired of d2 but the reason that people are using it is because it is so good it is good. I'm tired of seeing D2 just like everybody else. I'd like to have some variety and some choices. Um, basically something new to get excited about. But D2 is really, really good. It's going to hold an edge a long time. It is really tough. And this knife is going to last you a long time for what you pay for it. It is not made in the USA. Do with that information what you will. That doesn't affect me. This is for my review. This is a tabletop review of this knife. And this is a good knife. So let me know what you think in the comments. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like. Comments and likes help me with the algorithm here on YouTube. If you are enjoying the content, think about subscribing. Turn on those notifications so you don't miss the alerts when I post new videos. I really appreciate the support. I hope all of you have a wonderful week. Peace.